welcome to Toffee TV. We've asked you for your questions and you've replied. If you want to get involved, just send us a little video clip. We're going to put these videos together every week. Let's start with Andy. Andy Bush, absolute radio DJ and Evertonian. He's been in touch. Hey Toffee TV, it's Andy Bush here from Absolute Radio. Cheers, just having a beer, watching some of the brilliant World Cup games today. Got me back into football again. I have my enthusiasm back after Everton managed to strangle the life out of me this season, but here's hoping to better things. Uh, so yeah, love the channel, love what you do for the Blues. Uh, at some point next season, I want to try and get up and be a guest on the show. That would be amazing. That's an ambition of mine. Uh, my question for you guys is this, with the, the changes that are going to be brought by Silva this season, exciting times, I'm thinking maybe a bit of a clear out. Which players do you see leaving the club and why? See you soon. Cheers, and. Thanks for getting in touch with us. Be good when he comes on the show. It will be Can't good when wait. he comes on the show. Um, who to sell and why? It's a tough one, isn't it? Because obviously we've only just gone back after pre-season, you know, a couple of days in. Uh, off the top of your head without knowing what Marco mm. Silva's plans are, kind of thing. You you look, we probably come up with similar ones, wouldn't we? Mm. Say, like Ashley Williams. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone would. No point. Being no. at the club. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Morgan's. You see, the Snidland one's the tough one, I think. Mm. Because I think Silver would look at him and go, if we can get a tune out of him, he's worth keeping yeah. almost. But his attitude, I mean, I know that you were you no, weren't happy with his attitude at all. I just don't you? think he should ever play for Everton again. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Fair enough. Um, Kevin Morales. Yeah, um, there's some, it's a similar theme, isn't it? Anyone who's surplus, and there's a, there's, there's a lot of people. Williams is surplus. Morales is safe, but you know, look, think about a player who is second in their position, let's say, mm. or even third, mm. and look at the what the wages on, look at their age, and you can come up with some quick, quick ones. Mm. Williams, Morales, definitely gone. Balassi, um, Foons, Mori's already yeah. gone. He would have been someone would have said mm. anyway, so he's gone. Wayne's gone, and he would have Wayne wouldn't have necessarily been someone that would have come up with, but no. But I mean, when you're looking at position, yeah, yeah, where to go. Um, and to be honest, past past that, Martina, yeah, Martina's garbage. Um, no, well, he is though, isn't he? He's not, there's no quality there at all in the lad. He well, works hard and know all that, but he's not. There's he's no not gonna get if we're gonna go up a level, which we all want. You've got it. There is some tough decisions mm. to make, and you do have it's to look. Tough decision. No, but I mean, you'd have to look and go. He's just not good enough anymore. He's not good enough. He's not good no enough. Bessage. Bessage, I think, is that there's a player in there without a shadow. But like I said, these four years he's been here, and I still can't tell you if he's good enough to consistently perform at the highest level because we haven't seen enough. He's one as well. Something. He's though. one as well that you go. Should we sell him? for his own good as well he's yeah. come to a stage in his career where he really needs to be playing mm. and I don't imagine that's something Everton can offer him no. um, you know in a, in a even you know in a, in a new look midfield you want to look past that mm. uh, play like him so um, what did you think of very quickly Luke Garber going off the right time wasn't it he's not going anywhere is he I think you know, you know. but some of the I mean what are the one of the young players is there any young players you'd say well I don't necessarily think they're good I think Galloway Galloway, yeah. Galloway and Tyus Browning because I think the pair of them I think they're just stagnating Pendleton Pen Pennington Pennington um, I, I would I would because I, I look at him and he played in our first team two seasons ago and I don't see him pushing yeah, the players we've got now I think they no. signed him on a contract just to secure him yeah so they, I think he's a decent defender but I think he needs to go somewhere yeah he's play. the kind of player that needs yeah. like two or three players yeah, two or three years playing mm. solidly and then you never know he might like re-emerge I look at him and as similar to Shane Duffy yeah and I think Shane Duffy went away and got games played for Blackburn then went to Brighton and he's very good at Brighton now you know he's, him and Dunk are great so. and there's nothing we could have done about that they, he had to go away he did and, yeah and, um, and develop know, build, yeah. his, build himself up yeah so. yeah Anyone else? No, not really. I mean, I, I think you know, there's some there's people like people like Stecklenberg. That, but I'd keep I'd keep Stecklenberg. I mm. think he's a, I think he's a, a decent number two. Yeah. And I think um, I don't I don't see any immediate need to to just get rid of him mm. um, with with Pickford yeah. the way he is. So um, past that, it's, it's gonna be very interesting over the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah. it's all it's all the typical names, isn't you'd it? You say like you you the ask pops up, doesn't he? Some people are telling yeah. him I wouldn't be in the rush to get rid of him. Classing again he pops I wouldn't be in the rush to get rid of him without seeing if Marco Silva mm. can get something out of him. 
So uh, it is. It's yeah. one of them at the minute, isn't it? Definitely. Loads of variables. Yeah. Sean's been in touch. Hi, Ped. Hi, Baz. Just a quick question um, regarding Jack Reddle's contract that's obviously um, been cancelled by Sunderland. I was just inquiring as to whether you consider taking him back on the same sort of deal we had with Jose Baxter. I know the circumstances are obviously different, um, but he's still one of our own, so I was wondering whether you'd be interested in taking him back, trying to give him a new lease of life, and obviously either benefit in us or another club. Thanks very much. Keep up the um, good videos, guys. <laughs> well, sh that's... That's radical, yeah. Sean. If I'm honest, that's that's, that's left field. That's uh, that's out there. Um, Jack Rodwell. I, I can see where you're coming from, but I think they're slightly two different situations. I think I don't think Jack needs. I don't think he needs necessarily a leg up anywhere. Number one, he's made. He needs a club. A lot of money out yeah, of Sunderland. Of I think he just needs a club. But also, though, it's his fitness, isn't it? His mm. fitness has never been, never been there. He's never had consi that. I think ultimately over his career, it's always been in his fitness that's let him down. Can you can you just allow? You know, in theory, it's it's a good, nice idea. Bring him back to the club and help him for a year. But does he re does he really need that? He probably does because because who's taking him? Not many are gonna take him at the minute. If he he's made a lot of money, I think he was, he's we we seen the figures the other day, didn't yeah. we? And he were quite remarkable. And he was only on a winning team once or something in Sunderland in, in his time in, in the league. So, but I think he's got something, Jack Rodwell. But it, I think has he been in Sunderland for four years now or something like that? Yeah. Three years hardly played. So again, it's the injury thing. He's mm. he's definitely got ability. But I don't know what you do with him. But I suppose if he wanted to come back to Everton and the event, we'll give you a thousand pound a week, and we'll see how you go and get you fit and mm. and see. Then you'd look and go, well, you know, he's a decent player. He could go and play for like the twenty threes as well and develop them because he's a thing. He's different than Baxter in terms of if you could get him back to a level, he's mm. actually a good footballer. But I just don't see that happening. But I understand why Sean's asked the yeah. question because you could. They're not with a good fee for him as well. He's a decent player, but he'd have to prove his fitness and he'd have to work up to it. I, I suppose know. that's one where, as a player, Jack Rodwell might think will be thinking someone's going to ring. So that might be mm. a, might be one of them where, like you know, you get to like September or something. Although he is a free agent, so we can sign for him when he wants. But mm. if Everton were to offer him something in September and say, you know what, if you want to come back and do something, I like, don't know. It's got McFadden back. Yeah, it's an listen. It's an interesting prospect and. I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be other clubs that'll will think in almost in those terms. I get him in. Just should get him taken to Celtic. I think that'll be a good move for good coach, decent level. Gerrard, big thing. Oh, Steven Gerrard, yeah, and, and see if you can get him fit and perform. Mm. I think it's only fitness, and, and I, if I if I was going to take Jack Robwell, I'd take him and say, "You're playing centre back, yeah. not centre midfield. Yeah, you're playing centre back." Yeah. Definitely. I think that could min min minimalise the injuries if you played And I think it might settle him into a position because I think, I don't know about you, like he came down to Goodison and played in the Cup last year and he was up against Tom Davis and it was like night and day. Tom Davis ran the game, 19. Mm. Jack was all right, but he was a bit. I, I think I don't think he's good enough to play that role. I think as a centre back he could be. I a think he's culture. also lost. I think he's lost a hunger for the game as I well. I think he's lost his way because I think you lose your way when you don't nail any position down. Mm. I think when he came in at Everton, he played left back at um, AZ Alkmaar, didn't he? Made his debut when he was 16. And everyone was saying he's going to be a centre back. He was earmarked to be a centre back. And then Moyes put him in defensive midfield. Then he became an attacking midfielder. But he never had the. I don't think he had the. The ability to play as an attacking midfielder. I no. know he scored the odd goals. He had a good goal against United, and I think he scored against Villa in the cup. Yeah. But and he scored. He did score a cracker against Sigma Olmelok or whatever in Europe from the edge of the box. But I think in general, I've always looked at him as a defensive player, and I think you're right as a centre back because he's good on the ball. Mm. I think the only thing with him is he's not great in the air, but you know that's something to work yeah, on, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Mm. It's an interesting one. It is, it is interesting, but. 
not 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 convinced. Not convinced. I think if Moise was the manager, yeah. I think he might be back here. But I'm just not sure he'd be high on Mark O'Silver's list yeah. to be honest. Thanks for the question, anyway, Sean. On to Mark. Hi, Baz Ped. Um, question for your Q and A: Who's the better captain um, between Phil Jagielka and Phil Neville in terms of leadership on and off the pitch? Cheers. Cheers, Mark. Best best captain. Phil Neville or Phil Jagielka? The power of the Phils. Right. Jags. It's, it's this is the this is the dilemma, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Jags. Just being a, an immense player yeah. for us, being fabulous. Neville was a was a let's not read his history. Phil Neville was a good player for yeah. us. The last year or so, mm. he'd, he'd fell off the radar a bit, like Howard, and he stayed a little bit too long. But as a captain on the pitch, yeah. Neville said some things which I did, which were I thought were ridiculous off the pitch. On the pitch, I think he was really yeah, good. I do. He came in and he did point. You know, he was in he there. Pointed. He pointed. He pointed a lot. <laughs> He was in, he, he like led by example, he organised, I thought he was good that way. I don't think Jags is as good that way, mm. but I think as a footballer, Jagiel is better yeah. and done more for us. So it's a, it's... It, no, if the, question's, you if the question's on purely on captain, I think Phil Neville's a better yeah, captain. Yeah. I think he, I think he um, had far more experience of winning, mm. of winning and brought that into... And organised. Yeah, and brought that into mm. the club. And, and, and you've seen that, you've seen yeah. the amount of times where... Um, you know, we helped galvanise things, or knew when something needed taken up a little notch, mm. or or when if something. We obviously remember that Ronaldo. Well, of course, if, but if a little something naughty needed to happen, he provided it, yeah. or or you know a little maybe a sound bite to back up the manager or mm. something. Um, Great step overs as well. Yes, yeah, step overs were amazing. Um, diving against Liverpool wasn't brilliant, but no, I think I think as a player, I think. I think um, Jack Gale could be obviously fondly more remembered, mm. but I think as a captain, I think you got to give it to Neville. As mm, you just said yeah. there, a lot of history is being rewritten on on Phil Neville because we only tend to remember players as the, how they go out. Right, yeah, yeah, you know, and he did stay a year too long. And his brother got it right; he knew when the legs had gone. Yeah, yeah. But Phil never quite uh, got that. But then again, that that's for the manager that's to sort manager. out. And we've seen that with a lot of when a manager's got someone fighting for him in his corner. We've seen the same with Martinez and Tim Howard. Yeah. When you've got someone fighting for you in your corner in the dressing room and all the rest of it, a big character, you probably try and keep them as long I as think, you can. I think the other thing with Neville as well, if he'd have just played right back, yeah. he'd have been all right near the end, but he was in midfield, and he was in midfield with Leon Osman for a couple of yeah. his horrendous displays and the pair of them. Although, didn't he play right back at Old Trafford and keep everyone on side? Some time. Yeah, but so, you'll have the odd. Yeah, but you'd have the odd mistake. Stephen Pienaar booted Ryan Giggs in injury time when we were yeah. getting the well, one one draw for no reason whatsoever, and we lost. So, people, even the greatest players, make silly mistakes. I just think people will always remember the Wigan yeah. game as as the thingy, and he was in there with Ozzy. Blessed the pair of them. If you stuck them together, they still were slower than a snail. So, it was one of those things. Yeah. But he don't. Uh, Neville was a good player for Everton, and you know people they do like to read out history. But he was a good player for us, and he was a good captain for us. But again, just went on that little bit too long. Jags has been absolutely fantastic as a player for us, and still is. Yeah. To be fair, even though he's obviously yeah. a bit slower, he's still a fabulous player for us. But uh, so as a captain, to answer um, Mark's question, Neville. you'd have to say Phil Neville. Yeah, yeah. Hi lads, it's Joe. Um, is this the breakout season for Mason Holgate, and who is his best defensive partnership? Cheers, Joe. Thanks for that. So. Obviously, there's been talk. There was talk of Mason Holgate maybe leaving, but that seems to have been clarified now mm. by uh, Marco Silva, or certainly it co it's come through that. Yeah, you know, so this has to be the breakthrough season for him, surely. Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, he played games last season. I thought, to be honest with you, at times him and Williams were our best defensive partnership. Well, they were the partnership when Sam come through mm. and mm. come, come in. Yeah, and I thought, I thought Mason Holgate. Had a, had a good season I think there was a couple of games where he, he didn't have his best games um, West Brom at home where he played Rodriguez on side yeah. and if he did react he'd have still he'd have got there but he didn't and Spurs at Wembley a couple of yeah. times he, he, he let himself down but the two derby I know I know it caused a, you know 
there was a little bit of after the thing, but he he was he it. was fully no, but I mean he was fully justified yeah, in what no, he said because it happened. No, what I mean is that when, when he get when he's get prior to that, when yeah. he's getting in this face, and I mm. want to see all that. Brilliant. A fun, funny, I heard I heard someone talking about this and um, on the radio, and and you know, basically I thought, you know, what they were saying was a striker, a young striker. Can make mistake after make mistake after mistake, mm. but then they put the ball in the back of the net, and it's like, oh, yeah, we've got one here, lads. Yeah. A defender doesn't have that. No, you know, a defender doesn't have that um, the luxury, luxury yeah. of it. And like we were talking before, mm. defenders sometimes have to go away, lay in the trade, make those mistakes, yeah. go down to come back up again. Mm. Uh, and or we see defenders like look at the England team. Look at the defenders in the England yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. All of them came from lower league, mm. made mistakes, and then have made their way up. Mm. And uh, and you know some of them still made mistakes. You know some of them were allowed to make mistakes with us. Um, I think defenders will always make mistakes, and it'll always get it'll always get highlighted because, like a goalkeeper, a lot of the time it ends up as a goal. So you go back over it and over it. Whereas a centre forward, of course, and I was a centre forward. You missed. You miss five sitters and then you knock one in at the end. Everyone mm. remembers the fact you knock one in at the end and you've won the game. Exactly. You know, and you look. So and go. I think this has definitely got to be a season forum where we see a more a more consistent run. Mm. Um, in in the in the. Are you are you encouraged by uh, what's coming out the club about them that they're going to make them a part? You know, a key component of that. But he side. should be. He was a main component of it last season. Mm. But he ne- But he was. There was no consistency. But he's got everything, though, hasn't he? He has, He's but the interesting part of that question was, who who would you play him with? Because yeah. if you, what you want to do is you want to go into the season with a pair and almost say, well, that's our pair for the rest of the yeah, season, yeah. or that's what that's my that's that preferred partnership. Preferred partnership. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to stick with it. And even and it's even a case of, so is that Keen? You know, because he's the, the most expensive player. Do you, do you say, well, do you say almost say to Keen, well? Actually, you know, you've got to look, we, after, you've got to look after him, or they got to look after each other. Mm. So that that's an interesting concept. Yeah, I look at Michael Keane. I know this is about Mason, but I look yeah. at Keane. I think I honestly believe Keane will benefit possibly more than anybody in that in that squad from having Marco Silva's intense coaching. Mm. And I think what we'll do is we'll find out very quickly whether he's up to it or not because he'll be given that much information and told where to go and what to do. Um, he's, he's just done an interview with the Everton website saying he's asked his brother who played under Silver at, at Hull and he spoke to um, he spoke to my, uh, Harry Maguire mm. about him and they were saying he gives you so much information blah, blah, and he said I'm excited because it'll really benefit me and I think it will because Sean Dice drilled him and he was mm. excellent Liverpool and United wanted him mm. so a lot of big clubs wanted him so I think the same think, maybe think, for Mason as well as Mason Hall, or what you've got to say you just got to say to Mason Holgate well you know what are you? What are you prepared to do? I, you know, are you prepared to come into this team and be a leader? Because that's exactly what it needs mm-hmm. at the back. Mm-hmm. Be a leader, and and and, you know, if I put you together, can you do it? Can you do can it? Can you? Yeah. Do I need to go out and buy another centre half, or can you do it? Yeah. You know what I mean. That yeah, yeah. that's got to be the question, hasn't it? Because it is a big yeah. season for him. He's got to. He's got to nail down. Yeah, he's got to place. Down. Otherwise, he will find himself. Going away and rebuilding and go, you know, going through that process. So it's up to him. Mm. You know, he, is he good enough? Let's see if he's good enough and if he can cut out those mistakes and if he's got complete concentration. Because I think, as a footballer, I think he's got everything required. I just wonder whether he's got the concentration mm. to focus on the games on and that. and and to be to be aware and sense the danger. Because that's what all good centre backs have got. It's the the ability to sense when the danger is, because when you look at centre backs, it doesn't. You know, centre forwards are fast. We know that most of the good ones are fast, yeah, yeah. and they will always beat centre backs in a race. Yeah, of course, but if yeah. the centre backs can see where the danger is going to be beforehand, then that's a big thing, and yeah. you only really get that through experience. Some, the very best, are, are born with it. It's just the, the but they still need to iron it out. I mean, I've seen Chiellini, who I regard as one of the best in the world. Still, make some terrible harvest, but he, but there's been so many games when he's absolutely yeah. fantastic. So it, it is. It's like you say, yeah. you, know, you can't make mistakes. So good question. good question. Thanks to Joe for the question. Thanks to Andy 
Thanks to Sean and thanks to Mark. If you want to get your video in, drop us a line. Send it over. Either send it on WeTransfer to ToffeeTV1 at gmail.com. So that's WeTransfer is a website. You go on, you just upload your video and you send it. Takes, it's free. It takes, cost takes free. It takes two minutes. seconds to yeah. do. Or send it via WhatsApp to the number in the description. Thanks for watching Toffee TV. We'll see you later.